Welcome. We are going to walk through differentiated assignments in Writable. Uh, this collection is new and was built to support students as they learn and revisit the foundational skills in genre-based writing, so in informational writing and in argument writing. So we'll take a look at an assignment. Um, each of these assignments was really built for gradual release, and so a teacher could model um, these assignments and, and kind of move through a whole unit, or you could pick and choose skill by skill, um, and these can be used, um, in, again, in whole group, in small groups, you know, students may be working in pairs together, or they could be used in independent practice. But because they each come with three levels of scaffolded practice, everyone's reading the same passage, everyone's working on the same assignment, but with different levels of support. So let's take a look. All right, so let's first start with where you find the differentiated assignments in Writable. So I'm in Explore, and then I'm gonna make sure I've chosen my grade band, and then I'm in Skills Activities. So Skills Activities and High School Skills Activities. Um, when I scroll through, you'll see that there's, the first unit is not differentiated, it's just a skills practice unit. Um, the next one is, it says with differentiation. So this is the one you're looking for. Um, and then again, we have informational, and then the differentiated informational. So we're gonna look at argument here. Um, again, you could move through each of these assignments. They do build skill on skill, um, and they kind of are a nice summary of everything you would need to know um, in you know, a genre like argument writing. Or at this point in the year, you could decide, hey, I've already taught most of these, but my students really need to go back and revisit counterclaim or evidence, et cetera. Um, so let's go ahead and if I decide on an assignment that I like, I can see all the standards and skills that are built in and I can preview it, but I'm just gonna go ahead when I wanna use it and copy the assignment to my My Assignments list. So once I have it in my My Assignments list, I will go ahead and look at the three levels of scaffolding. All right, now let's take a look at the three levels of scaffolding. Um, just to show you where um, you're going with this, when you end up assigning the assignments with differentiation, you will have a chance to have your students grouped into you know, three groups. So here it's going to say assign with differentiated prompts because the, the passage we're working on has differentiation. And of course, I get to always choose my, my feedback options here. But just to show you, this is going to be the screen where you decide which students are going to get level one support, which students level two, and which students level three. Level one has the least amount of scaffolding, and level three has the most amount of scaffolding in Writable. So that's what you'll be doing once you um, decide. Um, let's take a look, though, at the three levels of scaffolding. So I'm going to go in and preview this assignment. Level one is um, the least amount of scaffolding, right? So again, all students are working on the same assignment, all students are working on the same skill, but it's been built out with three levels of support. So in the first level, you'll always see the reading passage on the left. We're really proud to have put together a collection of authentic reading passages. They're either student samples um, or they're high interest um, reading passages. So these, these uh, articles are always, um, authentic, interesting, and they really tie nicely to the skill. In this case, we're working on organization and transitions. So reading passage and any supports, like a word bank would be over here. Prompt is always here for the student to read. And then their, their planning work um, is in their form of graphic organizers is here, and their writing is over here. So that's kind of how you navigate Writable. Eventually, when they're done with their writing, they will click check and submit, and they'll you know submit their planner, and then they'll submit their writing. So these checklists um, or rubric items help keep them focused as they write, and this is ultimately how you're gonna be grading their work. So let's go back to the first level. The first level doesn't have a lot of scaffolding. It's telling them to independently read and highlight transitions, and then they're gonna go through a series of two graphic organizers. The first one is helping them do a closer read um, to you know, really um, analyze the text and get closer to the text in terms of what's the claim, what are the reasons that support the claim, start to show the transitions that the author used, right? The next graphic organizer is about planning your own writing. So your hook, your claim. So you, know, you will be moving through two graphic organizers in all the levels, but in level one, 
you can see nothing is really pre-filled out for them. They're really um, writing independently. If you're working with a student who may need level two support, what that adds is um, some sentence frames and sentence starters. So sentence starters here just give them a little bit of a, um, a language frame to start their thinking and their thought process. So planning your hook, maybe it's amazing that, and then they fill in the rest. Or when you plan your claim, I believe that. So they're still independently um, putting their own thoughts into these planners, but they're getting a little bit of a language frame to get them started. So great way to have them move through these more independently and um, build the confidence around those foundational writing skills. Okay, and then last but not least, your highest level of scaffolding, which is level three, will have um, an additional focus on, we have actually gone ahead and pre-highlighted the reading. So we have gone through and shown the student and modeled for the student what the transitions are. So that's the highest level of scaffolding. The other thing that we have done is they get these fill in the blank supports. So instead of just having the language frame, the author believes this because we're also telling them, you know, how to complete the sentence while still making sure they're thinking about this independently. So we're not saying the answer here, we're just saying give more background information. Down here, we might say, um, you know, list another possible transition. So um, as they also move into their writing, they will have a little bit more support again with the fill in the blank. So they're still putting together their own piece of writing, but they are scaffolded with those fill in the blank supports. So in summary, level one is um, almost no supports. It's really for students who are ready to use the two graphic organizers and write independently. Level two is um, adding in the sentence frames, uh, language frames and sentence starters. And level three is actually adding the fill in the blank support and it's pre-highlighting and pre-modeling the reading passage for them. And again, when you go to assign, the goal of these assignments is that students should move between levels pretty fluidly. So you don't wanna see a student ideally that's you know at level three and stays at level three. Maybe they're at level three um, for the first assignment, um, but then on the next assignment, they move to level two, so a lower level of scaffolding. So again, when you assign, you're going to choose assign with differentiated prompts. I would recommend starting pretty simple on the feedback until they get the hang of writable. So I would always say do maybe a self-review or maybe enable grammar aid. That's a really nice automated um, grammar check for them for spelling, punctuation, and syntax. Um, you can always add more later, but you know, start small on our feedback options when you're first working with Writable. But this is where, you know, this is a model of gradual release. So, you know, a student is not stuck at level three forever. They can be in level three and then the next assignment, they can move to level two. So you're gradually going to move them from a higher level of support to a lower level of support. And you'll know because you know your students, which students should get level one, two or three.